to when a patient experiences chest discomfort, the first priority is to rule out life-threatening conditions. One of the most serious is myocardial infarction, heart attack. This happens when blood flow to part of the heart muscle is blocked, causing tissue damage due to a lack of oxygen. The most important symptom of a heart attack is pain. It is often described as pressure or tightness in the chest. However, some patients may not mention pain and instead talk about difficulty breathing, also called dyspnea or feelings of anxiety. Heart attack pain rarely feels sharp or stabbing. If patients describe it as sharp, they often mean the intensity, not the nature of the discomfort. The timing of pain is also critical. Pain from a heart attack builds up over minutes. Pain that comes on suddenly and peaks instantly is usually something else, such as aortic dissection, pulmonary embolism or pneumothorax. Pain lasting only a few seconds is rarely related to the heart. And if it lasts for hours to days without being constant, it is less likely to be a heart attack. Myocardial infarction pain typically lasts at least 20 minutes and can continue for several hours if left untreated. It is constant and usually does not get better with rest or nitroglycerin. It provokes a heart attack. Physical activity often worsens the symptoms and rest can help. However, changing positions such as standing up or lying down does not usually affect heart attack pain. If the pain worsens with touch or pressing on the chest, it is not typically a heart attack. If symptoms worsen after eating or when lying down, it is usually not a heart attack either. Nitroglycerin can help relieve mild cardiac ischemia. But this is not always conclusive as esophageal spasms can also improve with nitroglycerin. If nitroglycerin does not relieve pain after 10 minutes, the pain might not be from the heart or it could be a severe heart attack. In elderly patients, especially women, symptoms may differ. Other signs can include sweating, shortness of breath, fatigue, nausea, fainting or even belching. If fainting occurs, it is more likely due to conditions like uh, aortic dissection, pulmonary embolism or arrhythmias. Signs that suggest myocardial infarction. Patients may appear anxious, pale, or even cyanotic bush skin. Sweating, also known as diaphoresis, can be a sign of a severe heart attack. Pain if a patient can point to an exact spot that is painful and it is tended to touch, the pain is likely musculoskeletal, the G. Costochondritis and not a heart attack. Here are nine strong predictors of a heart attack. Pain radiates from the chest to the right arm, shoulder or both arms. Pain radiates to the left arm. Pain occurs after physical exertion. Excessive sweating also called diaphoresis. Pisha or vomiting. Pain described as pressure, worsening pain compared to previous angina episodes. Age over 45, male sex or history of angina or heart attack. Now, what is not a heart attack? Pain below the breast, also called inframammary pain, is usually not related to a heart attack. Pain that is reproducible by pressing on the chest during palpation also points to other causes. Sharp positional pain that worsens with breathing. Pleurite pain is often unrelated to a heart attack. Pain that improves when sitting up but worsens when lying down is typically linked to pericarditis. Pain that increases the inspiration or worsens with movement often indicates non-cardiac causes. If the pain feels very sharp and sudden, especially with breathing, it often points to pulmonary embolism or pneumothorax. Severe. Sudden pain may indicate aortic dissection, not a heart attack. The common diagnostic tools for myocardial infarction are as follows. An ECG can show signs of a heart attack, such as stay segment elevation, which requires immediate treatment. Segment, depression and T-wave inversion suggest ischemia, but they are not always reliable, with only about 20% sensitivity. Diffuse est elevation with per-segment depression suggests pericardial. A chest x-ray can help rule out pulmonary conditions like pneumonia and pneumothorax. It may also show a widened mediastinum, which can indicate aortic dissection or pulmonary embolism. Cardiac biomarkers, especially troponin, are the preferred tests for diagnosing a heart attack. 
A DNAR test helps rule out pulmonary embolism. If life-threatening conditions are ruled out, but the risk of coronary artery disease remains, CT angiography is often used for further assessment. Another important diagnostic and life-saving procedure is percutaneous coronary angiography. It involves inserting a catheter into the blood vessels and injecting a contrast dye, which is visible on X-ray. This helps clinicians see blocked or narrowed coronary arteries.